Welcome back to my channel guys and welcome to all my new followers. Hope everybody's doing great. In this week's video I'm going to do a small explanation on what the guide number of a flash means. Um, manufacturers use that guide number in order to indicate how powerful a flash is. Um, really mainly for marketing purposes. As mentioned they usually inflate it, not by much, but it's still interesting to know how powerful a flash is. The guide number is really a small mathematical equation, occasion, <laughs> equation, a small mathematical formula that is the guide number is the distance by the f-stop. And I'll throw up a few graphics in order to explain this because if you look at the guide number, um, why do I need the guide number when it's more interesting to have the f-stop? So if the f if the guide number is 10 and the f-stop is 2 and the distance is 5 and then we know 10 is 2 times 5 similarly then we know that 2 the f-stop is 10 divided by 5 so the guide number divided by the distance similarly we know that the distance then is 5 which is the guide number divided by 2 so 10 divided by 2. That makes it much more easier um, visually. You can then um, throw whatever numbers around. Um, of course, it's very interesting to know what the f-stop is. So the guide number is always given at 100 ISO at, a, at an f-stop of f1, which almost nobody uses. So for instance, my SB600 has a guide number of 98 feet. So that's quite a bit, that's very powerful, or 30 meters. So all the way at 30 meters at 98 feet at F1, you can still have a correctly exposed subject. Of course, nobody does that. Um, but it's still interesting to be able to calculate what the distance is that you need in order to correctly expose a subject. If you're into that, let's say you're dirt poor, you're a student, you're eating ramen noodles every day, it's peanut butter sandwiches for you, you just can't afford anything but a flash that has a manual setting, it just has one power output, that's it. It has nothing else. And so, then if you know, let's say you have a guide number of 100, um, it's easy to calculate what f-stop you'll need, for instance, at two meters. So if the guide number is, well, you do need to put it into meters. Let's say it's, it's, it's 25 meters is your guide number. Then you can easily calculate what your correct, I'm, I'm not going to do it in my head, but you can easily calculate what your correct f-stop is going to be, let's say at two meters or at four meters or at one meter even, which you're probably going to be way too powerful at one meter. But yeah, it's just interesting. For me personally, it's interesting to know what the um, actual guide number is of an, um, a flash. Let's say you're a professional, you're definitely uh, better off to know what uh, your actual guide number is of a flash because usually they're a bit less powerful. You don't want to underexpose your um, subjects. Nowadays, of course, I mean, we're living in the world of digital. Of course, I'm a film channel, I'm a film shooter, I also shoot digital. And with digital, it's so easy to let everything be automated, just shoot DTL, who cares? And I think that the more automation is in between you and your gear and your kit, the far farther you're removed from actually understanding how that piece of kit works. You know, given that you just rely on automation, um, that's my opinion. You don't have to share that opinion. I just think it's interesting, me as a little bit of a closet nerd, to know what the guide number is. You don't have to, um, but it's just a small mathematical formula in order to let you know what you need and when you need it, how you need it. You can do automated, and I use automation as well. But it's interesting to know what it does. For instance, TTL and, and, and balance fill flash. So TTL, BL in Nikon terms. Um, I just found out today that um, with normal TTL, the flash doesn't even communicate with the light meter of the camera. In balance fill flash, it does so. 
through um, the distance information. That's the only information the camera sends to the flash, but I never knew that. So I found that out today. It's just interesting to know these things. So you can get maybe better exposures. Will it make you better as a photographer? Absolutely not. Because the, some of the photographers that I really appreciate and look up to and follow, they don't even shoot flash. Do you have to be a master at flash? No. Do I um, appreciate a photographer when they are a master at flash? Yes. Do I know everything about flash? Heck no. But I'm learning and it's, you know, photography isn't a, a lifetime thing. I'm learning, I'm getting ready to implement it a bit more um, in my street uh, game because I think it's interesting. There are um, avenues to explore with flash photography. To me, flash photography is fun. And I hope, guys, that this made you, that, that this um, video made the guide number just a little bit more clear for you. If you have any questions, any concerns, feel free to pop the questions down in the, co the comments below. And um, love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.